Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you are doing perfectly well. This is mathematics, and with me on the board here are two questions coming from 2018 grade 12. These are paper one type of questions. Please pay attention so that you understand everything that will be discussed in this presentation. Let's go straight into the questions. Question number two was, factorize completely 18 minus 2x squared, the number of marks that were given to. Then we have number three here, z is a point negative 1, 8, and m is a point 2, 12. The question is, find the magnitude of the vector zm. Number of marks, two. Let's see how best you can answer such kind of questions. Well, the solutions. We start with the first one here. Factorize completely. We are told to do what? To factorize completely for that matter. This expression here, which is 18 minus 2x squared. All right? We are taught to factorize. Now, this is what you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever you are taught to factorize, please get me very well. Whenever you are taught to factorize, you need to remember the type of factorization you are dealing with. Remember as well that the question is coming from a topic called algebra. This is just a component, factorization. Now, we have different types of factorization. That is the first thing that should come into your mind before you look at the question. What type have I been given? The moment you remember the type, it will be very easy for you to factorize that expression that you've been given. We have what we call common factorization we have difference of two squares. We have quadratic factorization. We also have factorization by grouping. You've seen that? Now, when we say difference of two squares, I hope you're getting me so that you, we go through one after the other. When we say difference of two squares, what type of factorization is this? This type will always have two terms. Have you seen this term? Have you also seen this term? Two of them. And the two terms will always be separated by this symbol or that operational sign, minus. Always there should be a minus. Have you heard how to identify difference of two squares? Two terms. The terms can either be fractions, decimals, or just whole numbers the way you are seeing them, like that. So don't get confused when you see fractions. That, mm, what type of factorization is this? And the, the fractions I'm talking about is, they can say you factorize something like this. x squared over 4 y squared minus, let's say, 25 here over, um, over, let me say, 25 over 36. Have you seen? This kind of question here. They say factorize completely this. I said two terms first. One, two. In between there should be a minus. This is still the same with the one that we have here. They both fall under what we call difference of two squares. Hope that one is clear. We also have a type of factorization that we have three terms. Let's put it this way. We have x squared minus 6x then plus 8, for example. You are told to factorize this. This is quadratic factorization. 
three terms always. One, two, three. Sometimes you find that there's a number here, maybe a two, what? Just know that that is quadratic factorization. But you need to understand that not all quadratic expressions can be factorized. Not all of them. Some cannot be factorized. As a result, those that cannot be factorized, you will never see them in paper one. Those that cannot be factorized, you see them in paper two. And paper two, it will be solve the equation. It means that one cannot be factorized in this way. You understand? It cannot be factorized. As a result, for you to solve that, if they say equal to zero here, then there's a number here. Solve the equation. Have you seen? This one now, you have to use the formula, the quadratic formula. I hope you are getting the concept. So those that they bring in paper one can be factorized because in there you will not be allowed to use the calculator. From there, we have a type of factorization that will have four terms. Let's put it this way. We have 2ax, maybe plus 3cd, uh, uh, and then we have minus 6ax, then let's say plus 4cd. Have you seen this kind? This one has got 1, 2, 3, 4. Four terms, that is by grouping. That is factorization by what? Grouping. So I think you have got basics, you've got ideas on how to identify the type. Difference of two squares, two terms separated by minus. Quadratic, three terms. Grouping, four terms. Now let's look at the question here that we have been given. 18 minus 2x squared. Now we know that this one is difference of two squares. How do you solve? Well, from the word itself, difference of two squares, difference means minus. That's why I said always there must be a minus. Two squares, it means everything must be expressed in a square form. Now, let's look at this question. This is 18 minus 2x squared. The only thing that is in square form is x squared. 2 is not. 18 is not. Now that is your duty to express everything in square form. And what I mean by that is in this form 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, that is in square form. Okay. Now ask yourself can 2 be written in this form? Can 18 be written in this form? Or in other words, I'm saying, is 2 a perfect square number? Is 18 a perfect square number? The answer is no. These two numbers that we have here cannot be expressed in this form. There is, there is no number that we can multiply itself two times and we should get to nothing. No number can be multiplied itself two times. And we should get 18. Nothing. So in that way, when you find such kind of questions, then they are saying, before you carry out this factorization according to the way it is, which is difference of two squares, there must be common factorization that must be performed first. So the common factorization here now is, you have this and this term. What is common on both sides? It's a 2. Because 2 can go into 18. So you are going to write 2. How many 2's are in 18? 9. Minus. Here 2 into 2, 1. So we'll just be able to remain with x squared. That is common factorization. Now look at what we have inside the brackets. Can 9 now be expressed in this form? Is it a perfect square number? Yes. 9 can be written in this form. 3 squared. So you are going to replace there. So it's a 2. Where there is a 9 here, you write 3 squared minus x squared. Have you seen? At that point, 
That is what you need to do. Now that I have what I want inside the brackets, what next? Well, my next assignment will be I will be able to ignore the squares since everything now is in square form. You ignore the squares. Okay, ignore them. Ignore the squares. You will just be able to write the bases. So I have two here. The base that I have here is the three. Minus here I have got it, x. You write like this. Without the squares. Then another pair. You just change the sign here. Three plus x. This is your final answer. You underline it. Neatly like that. The number of marks are located here. Two. So your answer mark at this point is two. That is the way the marking is done. At some point, you may make some mistakes here. So I will be able to divide these two. I will say, okay, fine. Uh, let me also look at the method. At this point here, I will be able to give you a mark, which is called the method mark. One. Then the answer mark as well. One. You get your full two marks. Simple. So basically, this is the way you should be able to factorize such kind of questions, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's look at the second question. This second question is coming from vectors. These are vectors. Z is a point. So we have Z, which is negative 1,8, and M, which is 2,12. These are the two points. We are told to find the magnitude. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will not be able to understand the term magnitude, it will be very difficult for you to come up with what they want. We have a point here. We also have another point. Let's say this is a straight line. This is where the M is. This is where the Z is. What are they asking? Magnitude. What is magnitude? The length of that line or the size of that line or distance. That is magnitude. Now that you understand that we're talking about distance, it means we are applying distance formula between two points. This is the way we write. Zm, now, since it is distance or magnitude, you have to put modulus. Without modulus, it means you are just calculating for the vector Zm. But are they asking you to calculate um, the vector Zm? No, they are saying magnitude of the vector Zm. So you have to put the modulus. Then equal to square root. This is the formula, ladies and gentlemen. X squared minus X, or should I say, uh, X2 minus X1, put them in brackets, square, plus Y2 minus Y1, put them in brackets, square. This is the formula. Don't forget. Don't forget the formula. That's the way it should be. Then you say ZM uh, magnitude will be equal to fusing the numbers here or substitute. Where are they coming from? What is x2 from the points here? Your first number here is your x1. Then this one, y1. On the other side, x2. This one, y2. Then substitute. So when I substitute here, I'm going to have something like this. What is my x2 here? 2. Minus. What is my x1? Negative 1. Since it has a negative, this is the way you substitute. You write negative 1, put it in brackets. That's how we substitute numbers with negatives. Then outside, there are these brackets. Put them like that, then square. Plus, on the other side, y2, 12. Minus y1, 8. Like that. Square it. Have you seen? Then simplify this part. 
So we are going to say Zm magnitude will be equal to square root. I have 2 minus negative 1. Negative, negative means what? Add. Same signs you add. So this is the same as saying 2 plus 1. And this will give me 3. I have got 3 squared here. And this will be 9. Which is 3 times 3. Please, this is not 3 times 2. This is 3 times 3. Which is 9. So write 9 here for this. Plus, 12 minus 8 gives me 4. Okay? Then I've got a square here, which is 4 squared. And this will be 16. So I have 16 here. This minus this is 4. There's a square here. 4 squared is 16. This is 4 times 4. Not 4 times 2. This is 4 times 4, 16. Then Zm will be equal to magnitude. What is 9 plus 16? 25. Then Zm magnitude will be equal to, at this point, we have square root of 25. I will understand that others will argue with the answer that I'm going to write here. Because we all know that a square number produces two answers, right? positive or negative. So when we say square root of 25, we are talking about negative 5 or 5. Now in this case, because we, are, we want to find the magnitude or distance, we are only going to pick the positive answer, please. Don't say negative or positive 5. Just pick the positive answer. Because we are looking for distance. You cannot say negative 5 kilometers. Okay? So you just pick the positive answer. So in this case here, square root of 25, you just say 5. And then you put the word units. This is your final answer. You get your full marks. As simple as that. I appreciate so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your support. Please share the video so that others can also benefit from uh, this explanation. Um, explanation rather. Um, remember to follow me as well on Facebook, TikTok, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.